Hello and welcome to another gameplay commentary video for Giant Slayer TFT. Today I'll be watching a game from the perspective of Faye on patch 12.7. This game was played the day of the patch and is on the Diamond Masters MMR bracket. The goal is to learn from viewing the major decisions within a game and what was successful and what wasn't. In this game we'll see several mistakes that put Faye into an awkward position for the mid game and then a well done pivot that eventually culminates in a win for Faye. There's quite a bit to talk about, so let's go ahead and dive on in. But before we begin, please don't forget to click the links in our description. Give your support to everyone who helped make this video happen. We host many TFT shows and turn us with plenty of exciting content to come. Be sure to also follow our Giant Slayer TFT social media pages. All right, let's get back to the video. Let's begin by covering the opening carousel along with the game plan Faye had going into this game. Most games on patch day are aimed towards learning for Faye by taking one aspect of the meta and testing it out. It's also important to know where the meta ended up in the previous patch, which for 12.6b ended up full circle back into a Sivir meta. But Sivir was then nerfed again in 12.7 and seems to at least be more in line with the rest of the meta. That leaves Faye with a few options, aim for flex AD boards like Draven, Jin, Jace, and Sivir, or go down the AP tree. Knowing Ari was slightly buffed and Arcanist mostly untouched, Faye's general game plan is to look for an Arcanist board with Ari or Victor Carry. If not, at least some type of AP board. Thus, we come to items in the component priority. The priority here is between Rod, Chain Vest, and Tier, with Faye favoring a Tier Opener. It does have less slammable items, but it is an essential component for champions like Ari, Victor, and Renata. She opts for a Tier, which can be used for opening items like Chalice, Static Shiv, or defensive utility items like Frozen Heart and Redemption. In general, for a new patch, just go with components that fit your plan. Taking a slightly weaker early component is by no means going to cost you the game, so don't sweat too much over the decision. Stage 1 we can mostly skip, except for the first major decision, the one for Augment. Augments went through all kinds of balance adjustments this patch, as they do basically every patch. There's no hard rule to follow on 1-4, because all it comes down to is what options you have as a player and what your game plan is. Having started with a tier opener, Faye's goal is to lean into the AP tree. Unstable evolution is okay, but nothing amazing, and Underdogs is mostly an early game synergy. She does have an Alawi 2 and Bruiser lined up to be played, so Underdogs is definitely a worthwhile consideration. But Enchanter Heart is the choice because a lot of endgame compositions do favor magic damage. Being able to splash in multiple Enchanters will have more of a lasting impact in the mid to late game than just having Underdogs early on. That said, it's perfectly valid to take underdogs with the intent to win streak because that's what the augment is best utilized for. Unfortunately, the first two rounds in stage two were a win and a loss, meaning a streak either way won't be likely to happen. One of the reasons for this is that Faye held onto and kept Lulu on her board, which took up a slot which could have gone to a damage dealer like Brand 2 that she eventually puts in. It's also worth noting that there's no items to give to Brand and VIP is not activated, all of which come back to haunt her throughout the rest of Stage 2 and most of Stage 3. If they had committed to playing an item holder carry, she may have been in a better position for the early game. It's also a questionable choice to take out a 2-star unit and add 2 bruisers, but as noted, Faze's board severely lacked damage. There's nothing major that happens the rest of Stage 2 and into Stage 3 other than Faye being unable to hold onto a streak. This leads us to an interesting decision where she opts not to level on 3-2, which is the normal leveling time most of the lobby will be leveling to 6. The point of highlighting this moment is to note that players do not have to follow the same curve every game. For Faye, leveling would have done nothing to help her board unless she had rolled, and already being at 50 gold, she can just level a little bit later and have a stronger economy for level 7. The next augment round is here, and it's another trio of silvers. The thing about Silver Augments is that they do have an influence on the game, but they don't ultimately make that drastic of a change. None of the options presented here are game-breaking, though Item Grab Bag is always tempting just to have an extra item over most of the lobby. Backfoot is generally taken for backline AD boards, meaning it's really not something on the table for Faye to take, just he's looking to play AP. Item Grab Bag is tempting as mentioned, but Battle Mage usually pairs well with champions like Ari and Renata. This goes to show that oftentimes what looks like three choices is almost always one clear winner when it comes to augments. In this case, it's Battle Mage. The only problem with Battle Mage is that it can be a bait for poor positioning, which becomes a major issue for Faye throughout the rest of Stage 3. The issue of positioning becomes apparent when Faye faces the mercenary player of the lobby. Due to playing for the Battle Mage buff on all of her units, she ends up losing the round and cashing the other player out. Definitely always be aware of the relative strength of any mercenary players because the fastest way to doom a game is helping them to get a big payout. Moving into stage 4, Faye leveled to 7 beforehand and is rewarded with a Jace in her shop. Any 5 cost on 7 is definitely a high roll but gives Faye the opportunity to pivot her composition in a specific way. 
Having not used many of her components and knowing a lot of the lobby is contesting Arcanists, she can play around the Jace instead. This doesn't completely toss away her plans to play AP, and she also rolls into Seraphine, Morgana, and Renata. Being willing to transition from one plan to another and then play flexibly is the turning point in this game for Faye, even though her starting items and augments were very much pointing towards her playing a full AP board. Thanks to that transition, Faye makes it into the next augment round with a four win streak, a good economy, and a stable board. The final augment choice is usually the least interesting because it's usually fairly obvious which one is the best. Meditation doesn't do a whole lot on Faye's board as most of the units she wants to cast already have items. Salvage bin has potential, but this late into the game, it's unlikely to get as much value compared to earlier. That leaves the last option, component grab bag, as the best one to take. It's never going to be harmful for your board to have more components to use, so it's both the best option and the safest. Still on a win streak going into stage 5, Faye is able to easily level up to 8 with 50 gold to spend. There's two ways to play this out. Either she rolls for upgrades or roll a little bit of gold and aim for a faster level 9. Being on a 5 win streak, it would make sense to spend a little bit of gold and save the rest, but she decides to roll down to 30 instead. The reason for rolling is that while Jace 1 and Renata 1 do just fine in Stage 4, other players will be hitting power spikes in Stage 5, and having both of her main damage dealers level 1 won't cut it for long. Unfortunately, she isn't able to hit Renata 2 or find more of Jace. The other reason for rolling is to look for a replacement to cast it in and Singe, since both of them have lived past their usefulness at this point in the game. Ideally, Silco will go in at some point, and the replacement for Singe can look like a lot of different champions, either an Enchanter or Clockwork. Stage 5 ends up being a bit bumpy for Faye as she struggles to hit upgrades. Luckily, she does find a Silco and then messes around with positioning. Keep in mind she has Battle Mage as an augment and ideally wants to gain value from it. There's a lot of potential ways to position such as Jace in the front to help with tanking or maneuvering Seraphine to provide the Ice Cream Cone bonus to Renata instead of Jace. Ultimately, the positioning she goes for is a bust, as the decision was to take out Singe 2 for Senna 1. A weak frontline and not utilizing the Battle Mage augment results in health lost that puts her on a timer to spend gold to stabilize. We're mentioning this not just because we want to point out a mistake, but more so that positioning isn't always the easiest mechanic to learn. This kind of trial and error is the best way to improve at it. Keep in mind as well that the positioning should take into stock what your board's strengths are. The mistake here was not giving her backline Jace and Seraphine time to cast their abilities. But the wimpy front line of an Innovator Scarab in Morgana 2 meant she got easily overrun. Always try to remember what your board's strength is when positioning on top of scouting and adjusting based around other players. We're nearing the end of the game and usually this is where players' decisions are less about their composition and more about scouting and positioning. But for Faye, she has one last major decision to make and that's leveling to 9. She did opt to level the round before, but it wasn't enough to win the round because she had very little gold to add much power to her board. The pivotal moment of the endgame here is where she last second sells Senna and Jin to put in Galio. Galio 1 may not seem like a huge boost to her board, but it shores up one of the major weaknesses she has, Frontline. Putting in Galio soaks up a bit of extra damage, but more importantly, his ultimate buys her board time to get ramped up. This does cost her an extra enchanter, which does hurt her when she goes up against the AP boards in the lobby. But the decision to put Galio in pays off and lets Faye squeeze into the top four with a close win. A highlight of this decision is noting that sometimes you need to take stock of what your board needs more so than what fits your board in a cohesive way. Having four enchanter and two clockwork is objectively better in terms of synergies, but it wasn't the missing ingredient that her board needed. Galio on his own isn't exactly impressive, especially at level one, but a frontliner with CC was really what she needed to improve her board. Beyond all expectations based on how the early game went, Faye makes it into the final round of the game with seven health left. The only decision left to make is positioning and Faye takes the upper hand in the fight right away. Keep in mind that the previous major decision, besides positioning, that led Faye to winning this fight is the time that Galio buys for her board. It's still a close fight in the end, coming down to just a few units left, but she manages to finish in first place despite almost not even making it into the top four. The reason this game was interesting to watch is because it showcases how mistakes play a role in shaping the outcome of a game. What if Faye had made slightly better decisions early on in the game? or the positional errors made after taking the Battle Mage Augment. There's a number of moments like that to look back on in any game because those moments are where you want to improve. If those errors hadn't happened, the game for Faye would have likely been far less close at the end. This game also highlights how decision making can make up for mistakes such as pivoting into Jace, Renata, and Seraphine at level 7. Or again later on when Faye took out Senna and Jin to play Galio. That goes to show that key moments in the game are the best to look back on and learn from. Mistakes are certainly the easiest to pinpoint and improve on, but it's also good to recognize what you did well.
That's it for today, folks, but let us know in the comment section below what you'd like to see in our next gameplay commentary video. Thanks for watching, and if you're enjoying our content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future Giant Slayer TFT videos.